Welcome back to Knoxville, Iowa, the Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals. I'm Dave Argabright, Tony Bachoven alongside, Rod Patterson in the pits. Let's take one more quick look at that starting lineup. Shannon Babb is your pole setter. Outside of row one, the 17M is Dale McDowell. Row two, the 24 of Rick Eckert and the one of Josh Richards. Your third row is the seven of Matt Miller and the 32D of Darren Miller. Row four, the 50 is Denny Eckrich, and outside of him, the zero of Scott Bloomquist. Row five, the 15B, Brian Burkhofer, and the 21 of Billy Moyer. The F15 of Justin Fagers and the 28M of Jimmy Mars in row six. Row seven is the 15 of Steve Francis and the nine of Billy Drake. Row eight, 99 of Donnie Moran, the 15M of Mike Marler. Row nine, the one of Earl Pearson Jr., the 75 is Terry Phillips. And row 10, the 25 of Kerry Hansen and the S9 of Dan Schlieper. Your field comes off turn four as row 11 is the 3S of Brian Shirley, the 39 of Tim McCready, row 12, the 56 of Chris Speaker, Jay Johnson in the 5J on the outside. Dale McDowell gets a great start. Tony uh, jumps right out front. Shannon Babb right alongside, or right behind, I should say. McDowell leading. Mike Miller leading down the front straightaway. Look at him go right to the bottom. Bab Dave up on the high side. Yeah, Rick Eckert in that orange 24 trying to make the bottom work early on here. There's Scott Bloomquist, the zero, the voodoo child, they call him, trying to move into contention. Mike Miller, the leader, still on the bottom side of the racetrack. Excuse me, Dave, that's Dave McDowell. Yeah, Dale, Dale McDowell. McDowell. That's right. yep leading the race there. They had our scoring monitors a little bit mixed up up here. Got that Look at Bloomquist away. go right to the bottom as they race off turn four. Boy, Josh Richards alongside there. Here comes Eckert trying to chase down Bad. There's Bloomquist, Richards. That's Darren, Darren and Miller. Miller Miller. Bloomquist slides up across. Miller squeezes it in on the high side. As he goes to the top, they'll race off turn four side by side. Josh Richards still battling with Miller as they race down the straightaway. I'm impressed with this Josh Richards kid. I'll tell you, Tony, in tight quarters, he is not afraid of crowding you just a little bit. He's an aggressive young racer, very impressive. Look how smooth Dale McDowell is, Dave, as he races around the bottom side of the racetrack. He's got a nice lead right now. Boy, he's very comfortable early on. Now Eckert pulled back alongside here, trying to get underneath Shannon Babb. Shannon with a bit of a lead as they race into turn number two. Eckert pulls back up alongside. They'll race down the back sheet. Babb with the advantage. Eckert running in that third spot. Scott Bloomquist now. You see him come into your picture. The orange and, or excuse me, the black and green and white car there. Darren Miller in 32. Bloomquist has moved into fourth, Tony. Rick Eckert all over Shannon Babb. Bloomquist right on the bottom side watching those two race side by side. He hugs the bottom of turn two down the back chute. You know, Shannon Babb had a little bit of bad luck here about a month ago at the World 100 at Eldora Speedway. Won that $38,000 first prize. Came up 10 pounds light. 10 pounds light on the scales. Dale McDowell was a beneficiary who finished second but ultimately was awarded the win when Babb was disqualified. This kid has a chance tonight to make 35 grand. That might help uh, ease that pain just a little bit from that disappointment a few weeks ago. He is really running Shannon Babb hard. He'll take that position down the front straightaway now. But think about those tires. He ran three really hard laps alongside of Eckert there. And, and will those tires make it now? Well, I think so because it's starting to slick off a little bit. I don't think we're going to see the tire wear be a, that big of an issue, but we'll have to see. Bloomquist is impressive early on. He's uh, He came to race tonight. There isn't any question about it. They'll follow Shannon Babb down the front straightaway here at the Knoxville Raceway as they race down into turn one. Darren Miller now starting to reel in the leaders, but everybody so far, Dave, has stayed on the bottom. Yep, Dale McDowell making the bottom work very, very well early on. Going to get into traffic here soon. That's going to be a big thing on this 100 lapper, Tony. If they go long periods under green, you're going to have to deal with traffic all night long. The last two nights, that's what we've seen. The leaders were out there. They had a nice margin over second place until they got into traffic. Well, McDowell is uh, the, uh, the consummate racer. He's going to know how to make that bottom work. He's a good, patient guy, a class act. And uh, he's going to know how to, to set the pace early on to not use too much of that race car. We'll definitely find out how long his patience will last now because lap traffic is all over the racetrack. There's cars in front of him, up on the high side. 
As they race down into turn number three, there's a car right ahead of him. He needs to either move to the top, or will he be patient enough to hold on until those cars move up out of his way? Well, Shane McDowell is his brother, and that's his crew chief. They've got a really good working relationship. Their father's also heavily involved in the sport, known as Dover Cylinder Heads. So Dale McDowell, he's a long way from Georgia here, but he's got a good run going. But here comes Eckert. Eckert goes back to the inside as McDowell goes up on the cushion. Side by side, they're going to race off turn four. Lap cars right ahead of your leaders. Well, Eckert had to move to the outside to get by that lap car. He really couldn't get a good run on him because the, the lower lane was blocked. Well, Eckert went back to the top. McDowell on the bottom as he'll move by, try to move by the lap car of Vandenberg down the back straightaway. Now he follows him back in line. That's that patience you talked about. Yep, you got you to gotta use your head early on. It's so easy to get taken out from just with one little shunt, and your night is done, so you just got to be patient. He can't pay too much attention to Eckert giving him some pressure because just stay cool and uh, run your own race and get through the traffic the best you can. Dale McDowell leading down the back straightaway. You see Rick Eckert right there running on his heels. He's not out of striking distance yet, but he's got to be ready because Shannon Babb's slinging that car right around the top. Yep, 15 laps now in the book, 15 laps in, and uh, 85 to go. Boy, that sounds like a long way, but it doesn't take him long at this speed. Your leaders race heavy traffic, almost went three wide with lap cars down the back straightaway. Rick Eckert still running in that second spot. There's Scott Bloomquist. He dove it in real hard coming into turn one on this lap. He's trying to stay within striking distance of those top two cars. And he's given Shannon Babb a run. I think he's going to take third on this run, and he does. He now scored third place. Scott Bloomquist in the zero. Now going to work on Rick Eckert. Well, he's within the car length of Eckert. But, boy, Eckert got a good run down the back straightaway. Your leader, Dale McDowell, Dave. Boy, this guy, you're right, very, very patient. He's going to try to go three wide with lap cars. A lesser driver may have lost his patience already and, and tried to go to the top side and not waited for those cars to get out of the way. He's got a really good race car, Tony. His car's working well up high, down low. He's able to get through traffic very effectively. There's Scott Bloomquist, the voodoo child, crowding Babb just oh, a little bit on the Babb outside. Babb bumped the wall down the back chute. Bloomquist takes the position away. Babb stays up on the top side of the racetrack. He didn't lose his line, and now about a car length back, but you know, Scott Bloomquist needs to get toward the front, and he had to do what he had to do. Now, Eckert has used some lap traffic to draw right up on the back side here of uh, Dale McDowell. Oh, Shannon Babb, Davey, slowing in turn number two. And we're gonna have a caution flag. Tough, tough break. You gotta go back a lap or two and wonder, yeah, it's a flat left front tire. It looked like when he and Bloomquist got together, he cut the sidewall on that left front tire. He's got to get back into here to the work area. He may not be out of the race, Tony. He can change that tire, but he'll start on the back of the lead lap right now. So he's lost a ton of track positions early on. Boy, what a tough break. But you talked about the heat of this race, the pressure. They were racing hard. Bloomquist wanted that spot. Probably didn't do it on purpose, but they got together, and there's the results. Well, we're under caution here at Knoxville, Iowa. Stay with us. A lot of good racing left here on Speed. We come back to Green Flag Racing in just a moment. Shannon Babb out of the work area. Looks like the car's okay, and we're under green. The green flag comes out, and Dale McDowell leads him down into turn number two once again. Eckert in the second spot. Bloomquist running in that third position. Darren Miller running fourth. And Josh Rocket, Kid, or Josh Richards, Kid Rocket, running in that fourth spot. You know, Tony, the thing to watch here, Scott Bloomquist, maybe he had a little bit of damage, too. Let's see if his race car is as good as it was before that little collision there with Shannon Babb. That's right. We've seen those tires cool down, and those guys that were fast on longer runs tended not to be as good on the restart. There's Billy Moyer in the 21, another Hall of Fame racer. Josh Richards, Kid Rocket, in the one there, currently shown sixth. A lot of talent in that youngster as he races off turn four. He's had a good summer and looking to improve it here tonight. Yeah, Moyer working on the backside there of uh, Darren Miller in the 32. Scott Bloomquist just ahead. Billy Moyer, the veteran, running in that fifth spot. Runs right through the middle, Dave. Did you see that? Yeah, great run there in the middle of the racetrack. If there's something here in any groove, Moyer's the guy with the savvy and all these laps he's got as a racer to find it. Well, this time you see him go way up on the top side of the racetrack in turns one and two. Miller goes on the bottom side, and there's Rick Eckert. He's got Bloomquist right on his heels. And Moyer has made his way around Miller. Josh Richard shown in six. Dale McDowell continues to lead. Earl Pearson Jr. now starting to come off turn four in that Lucas Oil car number one. 
He's got Jimmy Mars right ahead of him. Earl Pearson shown running 10th right now. Earl Pearson Jr. He's come from 17th to the 10th spot right now, Dave. Yep, ahead of uh, now cutting down in front of Brian Burkhofer right there. You see him in Lucas Oil 1. Got a good run going here early. Donnie Moran up on the high side there. He'll pull right up behind Jimmy Mars coming down into turn number one. Pearson to the bottom side of the racetrack. Two and three wide through turn one. Earl Pearson Jr. will race Jimmy Mars down the back straightaway. There's the defending champion, Brian Burkhofer, as we go back to the battle with Earl Pearson. About a car width off the bottom. Jimmy Mars right ahead of him. They'll follow him down the front chute. Tim McCready there in the 39. Got another good night going. He's uh, had a terrible night that uh, on his qualifying night. Earl Pearson Jr. slides around Jimmy Mars down the back straightaway. McCready's race from 22nd to 11th. Boy, timing and scoring tells us, Tony, good run for that young man from New York. Now, you know, Tim McGreedy has been really, really hot this year. He's fairly new to late models. He's uh, more of a dirt modified guy from the Northeast. He's won eight World Outlaw races. Now we're going to have a yellow. Oh, just and, as Bloom uh, has passed Ecker. Boy, he had a run on the high side going into turn three. I really thought, Dave, he was going to hook up and come off at of turn four with that second spot. You know, the racetrack's holding up very well. Still very racy. 25 laps into this thing. Chris Spiker, excuse me, Speaker, I believe, the car number 56. Oh, and you see that right rear tire down, just as you said. Now, the drivers were told, Tony, if you have a flat tire, stop on the racetrack and uh, then get into the work area to change it under yellow. So we're going to have a quick yellow here. And Donnie Moran also in the work area. A lot of great racing right after this here on Speed. Dale McDowell, the car number 17M, will be the leader here on the restart. Rick Eckert running in that second spot. Scott Bloomquist running third. He's marched his way up there. you got to keep your eye on that zero car, Dave. He's getting fast. Boy, he is getting fast. You know, he came to race. I said this earlier. He came to race tonight. He's raced for a long time. And there's a lot of people sometimes question his focus. But I'll tell you what, you can't question it tonight. The guy is standing on the button and getting it done. Well, Dale McDowell brings him off the very bottom of turn four. The green flag is back out here at Knoxville as they race down into turn number one. Bloomquist to the outside. Moyer is going to follow him up high. A couple of Hall of Famers right there as McDowell quickly stretches it out just a little bit over the orange car of Eckert. Great restart for McDowell. Here comes Bloomquist to the outside. Well, that McDowell just drove away from him down the back straightaway and starting to put some distance there. But here comes Scott Bloomquist. He's looking to the high side as Eckert goes to the bottom. It's a little tougher to do it out there. This great big racetrack, you're covering a yes, lot more is. ground when you go to the outside. But as we said earlier, on these long runs, it really helps you build momentum if you can make it work out there. And Scott Bloomquist, now here he comes to work on Eckert again. Shuts the door. Not right now, he says. Well, Bloomquist's car really handling well. You don't see him carrying that left front tire like some of the other guys. So his car set up perfect to run the top. He's able to carry that momentum. Now he needs to exercise a little patience and wait for the right time to go past Rick Eckert. Well, if they stay under green here for a little bit, Tony, we're going to get back into traffic pretty quickly. This field spread out, strung out a long ways here. So if he can stay with him right now, he's going to get some help soon with some traffic. Rick Eckert's car could get real wide here in a little bit, too, as Scott Bloomquist just can't get a good enough run to get up on the high side. He stayed up there. Eckert keeps going back to the bottom, and he really does a good job of protecting the middle of the racetrack. And he moved to the middle just a little bit there, maybe trying to search for just a Now he's going to squeeze to the inside. Here he comes. Scott Ooh, bump, Bloomquist. Bump, bump. Oh, look at him. Just tried to squeeze in there. Couldn't quite get it. He had to get on the brakes going down into turn one. He had so much momentum coming into the corner. Rick Eckert says, I don't think so. Not quite yet, anyway. Well, Bloomquist goes through the middle of turn three, slides up to the top of the racetrack as they come off turn four. Dale McDowell still the leader. 30 laps in, Tony. 70 laps remaining. This 100-lap Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville National. Here comes Boomer. What a race for that second spot. Boy, they just keep battling for that position. Rick Eckert not ready to give up that second spot. He's done a good job of holding on and protecting his line. He's not left his line, but he's protected the middle of the racetrack, and he hasn't let him go by, but here comes Bloomquist again on the bottom. He's trying to squeeze under him down here in one and two, and three and four, he's going to the outside, but now he's going to get a little bit of a bite, and I think he's going to be alongside of him to take that lower groove away from him down here in three. But here's what's happened. Bloomquist got the spot, but they've allowed Billy Moyer to reel him in. 
And Moyer in that yellow and red 21, right behind Eckerd now. Bloomquist clearly takes second. Now he's going to try to chase down Jail Dale McDowell. In three or four laps, Tony, they're going to be into traffic. Steve Francis also up there in the mix as they race off of turn two past the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. You see McCready in the field. Now your leader comes off turn four, still Dale McDowell. Look at that lead he's put between he and Scott Bloomquist. And you know what? Dale McDowell, when we watch him go around this racetrack, doesn't even look fast because he's so smooth. The car just looks like he's puttering around to the inside, yet he's driving away from these guys. Well, Billy Moyers moved past Rick Eckert, moved up into that third spot. Eckert now back to fourth, and here comes Steve Francis, the car number 15. The Kentucky Colonel on the move. Yes, he's been very quiet this weekend, although on his qualifying night, <clears throat> excuse me, on his qualifying night, he didn't qualify well and drove from deep in the pack to finish, I think, fourth or fifth in the, in the future event. So he had a pretty good run. Now he really wants to redeem it tonight. But Tim McCready racing down the back straightaway with Josh Richards right behind him. Uh, Tim running in the seventh spot. He was looking for a good night the other night, too, got into some trouble. Yeah, he was really fast when he got crashed. I mean, uh, the kid was really, really strong. Lap traffic ahead of your leader once again, Dale McDowell with lap cars on the high side. He's able to go back to the bottom where he's been real good. His car is so smooth. He's not getting up on the berm. He's just guiding it right around the bottom. Well, he makes it look easy, just makes it look easy doing a nice job in his car. He's actually moved up about a car width off the bottom as Scott Bloomquist up on the high side as McDowell goes back to the inside of lap traffic again through turns three and four. Boy, here comes Bloomer in that white, black, and green number zero. McDowell to the inside, getting through traffic really effectively. That's right, Brian Harris, the lap car, goes to the high side, lets Bloomquist go by. I don't know if he really let him go by, but he moved up out of the way anyhow. Well, you know, you always want to race hard, but you've got to give a little bit of a courtesy to the leaders as they come through. Bloomquist back on the bottom side of the racetrack as they work through turn number four. You see Billy Moyer also on the move, trying to reel him in. Steve Francis, we're told, now scored fourth, started 13th. Good run for the Kentucky Colonel. Billy Moyer is pretty close to Bloomquist. He's almost caught him and, and now loses some ground down the back shoot as Moyer gets a good, excuse me, Bloomquist gets a good run down the back straightaway. Go right to the bottom of all those lap cars. Moyer in the orange and red 21 there. His father actually is involved with three other cars, including Shannon Babb's race car here this weekend. You see Dale McDowell representing the World of Outlaws race down the back straightaway. Got a good lead going, his car working very well. He's got to be pleased so far in the race with about 61 laps to go. You know, it almost looks like he's stopping down there. He's just going so smooth and easy, but yet, like I say, he's staying well out in front of these guys. Yellow flag. Caution coming out onto the racetrack. There's a car slowing. Looks like the two car. That's Brady Smith. And look at that right rear tire flat on that car number two. Doug Clark waving the gigantic yellow flag that he uses here at Knoxville. You get a good shot of that flat tire. I'll tell you what, this is a good race. 40 laps in, Tony, 60 to go. Uh, the Kentucky Colonel making a charge here. Several guys, Earl Pearson running well from the back. Uh, this is shaping up to be a great one. Stay with us. More from the Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals right after this. Scott Bloomquist in that zero has been charismatic and controversial sometimes, but is regarded as one of the greatest late model racers in history. Earlier today, we had a chance to sit down with Bloomer and get some thoughts. The black car, the aura, is there a side of Scott Bloomquist that we don't see? I think obviously there is. Uh, there, there's a side that people don't ever, probably never really get to know unless you become a close friend of mine. Uh, you know, we take this stuff serious, but you know that is a representation of myself i think and and a lot of people ask and and we don't always really it's hard to really give the right answer because it's is a lot more to it than you can explain in a short period of time you know you and your wife katrina are expecting a child soon your first child have you begun to think about how that might change some of your life goals some of your interests some of your hobbies that kind of thing yeah we we talk about it some and and i do think about it quite often um, you know, we're both very excited about it, and we're really looking forward to whatever changes it brings. You know, we're just, we're ready for it. So, you know, we're both 41 years old, and, 
and I think it's a great time for us. I've gotten, I've become successful. I've, there's not anything that, that I feel I'm leaving behind or that I'm going to miss out on, uh, you know, if, if I die tomorrow. So this is just a bonus in life and, uh, you know, and to have, to be set up in a business, uh, to be able to build race cars, to be able to step away from racing, you know, in the driving part whenever I decide to. I've already built enough of a future, uh, you know, that I'm confident we'll be able to, if I ever want to just stay home, I'll be able to do it successfully. Um, so. You know, your fans are some of the most loyal and, and rabid almost, as you'll see in the sport. How do you, and you've been known to be good with your fans, how do you balance time for yourself and some privacy and all of that when you've got a strong following like you do? Again, I'm fortunate to live in the country. Uh, we've got 120 acres. If we need to, we shut the gate. And that's where I say I like to be able to go home and have this three or four days, you know, to go fishing and to to be able to, you know, ground yourself basically and, and be totally separated from racing. Uh, that's what, that's how I do it really. Uh, you know, about anything that I'm involved in is, is something, you know, whether it's golfing, uh, uh, you know, just getting out on the lake in the boat and just, you know, around your close people. And none of them treat you like you're a race car driver or, or anyone, and that's what I like. A lot of racing left here at the Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville National. Stay with us here on Speed. Tim McCready's bad luck continues this weekend here at Knoxville. He's out of the race early. He was running seventh, had come into the work area, and then pulled into his pit stall, shut off the engine, unbuckling to get out of that race car. Tough break for the New York man, Tim McCready. As we get ready to go back to racing here, the Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals, 40 laps in, 60 laps to go. Dale McDowell sets the pace, and here we go. Green flag is out, Dale McDowell right to the bottom. Scott Bloomquist running in that second spot. Look at Billy Moyer up on the high side. Boy, he reeled him in there in turn two. Down to the inside, going down the back straight away. Very good run there for Moyer. He's really coming into his own here. Side by side, they battle for that second spot. Bloomquist able to hold off Billy Moyer. Steve Francis right behind him in the fourth position. Rick Eckert now in that 24 has faded to a little bit just to fifth. McDowell looks like he's having to run a little bit harder right now, Tony. He's not as soft and easy around the bottom as he was earlier. Steve Francis holding on very well there in the fourth position, trying to reel in Billy Moyer right ahead of him as Scott Bluquist looks to the high side, trying to make the move on Dale McDowell. Now they settle in. Bloomer's trying to set his sights on that 17M of Mac Daddy, Dale look at, McDowell. Look at his car just jump right into the corner. He'll pull right up alongside. Your race for the lead, Dave, down the front. You've got a new leader now. That was impressive. Like he just moved to the outside and just hooked up and just launched past him. Great run for Bloomquist on the outside. Just a great run. But here comes McDowell. You ain't heard the last of Mac Daddy yet, baby. He's coming right back at him. Boy, he'll just pull right back to the bottom. Bloomer had to go way up to the top. He's got enough to hold him off down the front straightaway and now starts to put some distance in there. But look who's coming now. Moyer says, you know what? I saw a guy do this just a minute ago. I'm going to try it. I'm going to make it work. I'm going to move past you and take second place. Billy Moyer, now Mac Daddy fades to third. Well, Dale McDowell's tires have had a chance to cool down under that yellow. He may have to change his line until they get heated back up again because now he's already fallen back to the third position. And Steve Francis in that 15, who started 13th, is all the way up to fourth. He's got to hustle just a little bit to stay with these guys. 45 laps in, 55 laps to go. Well, there you see Dale McDowell. He led so long, Dave. He was looking so good as Steve Francis starts to close in. They both went to the top side of the racetrack now. Yeah, Dale McDowell is going to move to the inside. He's trying to make that outside work a little bit better, but he's not running quite as far outside as the other guys that we've seen. But there's the battle that's about to get interesting. Scott Bloomquist, the leader. Billy Moyer just reeling him in. Look at him put the big slide on the racetrack. Slides from the bottom to the top. He'll come off and turn four right on the bumper of Scott Bloomquist. Bloomquist and Moyer, a couple of true giants in this sport. Man, if you take the uh, take the two win totals from these two guys and add them up, you'd equal almost the corn stalks that surround this beautiful little Iowa town. <laughs> I mean, these guys have been around a long time and they've always been great racers. Here they come. They're going to trade some paint and uh, just see who's going to come out on top here. Bloomquist able to hold him off right now. They put some distance between each other. 
Billy Moyer still running in that second spot. He doesn't want to show his cards too soon. He doesn't want Bloomquist to know that he has enough to get by him. That's right. We're coming up on a halfway, Tony, and he's content right now, I think, to just follow that zero car. Maybe he'll wait on some traffic and then see if he can get it done the easy way in traffic. Take a look there as Bloomquist goes right around the top. There's lap cars ahead of him. Billy Moyer right there, about a car length back, about where he wants to be as they go down the back straightaway. Another great run, Tony, especially using that top, has been Eddie Carrier Jr., who I think came from the B main. He's ran all the way from 25th to 6th right now. What great a run. run for that Eddie. Is, that is great. You see Dale McDowell still running in that third spot. Now you take a look at Scott Bloomquist, go buy some lap cars down the back straightaway. Shannon Babb has gone to the pit area. His night may be over. Now here's Bloomer working the traffic very tight right there. Well, you saw him put kind of a sprint car move there. He went into the bottom, slid right up across the racetrack, right up to the cushion, put a lap car between he and Billy Moyer. But now Moyer's moved by the lap car. He'll go up to the cushion, try to drive that car off the corner. Moyer struggled just a little bit on that corner and just wasn't able to come off nearly as well as Bloomer. Take a look at how Scott's car comes off the corner. Very level. You don't see the car leaning over. It just sits right on the racetrack, and he's able to just drive it right through the middle. Um, Warrior sliding far to the outside, but Bloomquist running more in the middle groove right there on that lap. I think he's found the rubber, Dave. What do you think? Yeah, it could be. You know, he's still searching around a little bit. We've passed the halfway mark. 48 laps to go, 52 in the books. The thing he has to watch is Billy Moyer got a good run there. He brought it way up on the top and tried to diamond off turn four to get a big run. Now he's got lap cars to his advantage. He's got him boxed in there. Oh, Lewis what a hesitated move. just a little bit too much behind those two slower cars. And uh, Moyer trapped him perfectly to the inside and just launched around on the outside. That worked right into his hands. He drove him in there deep. The lap cars were ahead of Bloomquist, and Moyer was able to make that move as the yellow comes out on the racetrack now. Well, while we wait, we're going to figure out this yellow, and uh, let's go down to the pit area, Hot Rod Patterson. Well, Dave, the operative board there is hot. Tim McCready, a disappointing way to end this thing. Tell me what happened to the 39 car. Oh, uh, you know, we were making a little bit of progress. It just, uh, I got real, real tight when we put the hard right front on to equal up with the other hard tires we had on. It just kind of didn't steer real well. And I think we got up to sixth or seventh, and it looks like we knocked a hole in the radiator somehow, which hard to believe because the track's pretty smooth and there ain't no rocks in it or anything like that. But I just got to say thanks to Ann and Carl Myers. They put a great team underneath me, and uh, we're disappointed. Everything that could go wrong did this weekend. We had a fast car, but we'll be back next year and get them. Well, a disappointing way to a very promising weekend for you. Let's go back upstairs to Dave and Tony. I'll tell you, Timmy summed it up perfectly as we see Earl Pearson uh, Jr. in the pits on the Lucas Oil car. It has been a week, a tough week for McCready. Let's come back to the last 47 laps here at Knoxville Raceway here on Speed. Welcome back to Knoxville, Iowa. You know, Billy Moyer grew up just up the road here in Des Moines, uh, moved to Batesville, Arkansas many years ago to further his stock car career. Now he's back kind of putting down some more roots here in Knoxville, maybe leading this thing. Earlier today, we had a chance to sit down with the Hall of Famer, Billy Moyer. How do you keep yourself motivated through all the grind of a long season like this? It, uh, you know, I went through a, the last year or two. Uh, I had an off year last year uh, for our standards, I feel like, and the year before wasn't that great either. And, and I was kind of going through a little bit of that reality check, I think, when I think back of... Uh, of what was going on that because uh, I've changed a few little things in my program this year but not nothing drastic and we're running a lot better this year than what we were last year but uh, um, you know I, like I said here earlier you you run up and down the road and I was think you know I was asking myself questions if I still really want to do this or not or if I want to go back to my whole family's in the car business uh, here in Des Moines, you know, I could go back tomorrow and start doing that again and, and probably make more money than I make racing cars, you know, but I think, you know, I think I, at one time, maybe I want to do that. And then, then, uh, you know, you get to racing again and it's all about, uh, doing well racing, you know, it's hard for me if I'm running 10th, 15th and running bad, you for sure don't have near as much fun as you do when you're running in the top five. And, and, you know, this year we've been able to run better, and I think it keeps me motivated running better. You know, it's uh, th that's why I think. Uh, you know, just you got to run good to keep myself pumped up. I think. 
Welcome back to the Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals. Now, L Scott Bloomquist was the lucky dog as we go back to green flag racing. You had seen earlier, Billy Moyer passed him for the lead, but because that yellow came out, they reverted to the previous lap. The yellow flag laps don't count in this 100 lapper, so Bloomquist finds himself out front. That is a lucky, lucky break for Bloomer. Yeah, and, and Billy Moyer probably not so happy about that because he's now told uh, Bloomquist that he can pass him. Steve Francis now has moved into third, and Eddie Carrier Jr., all the way from 25th, is now shown in fourth place in that uh, 28 car. Boy, he's putting on a real good run here tonight, Dave, as we see Rick Eckert come off of turn four and the field working down the front straight. He's starting to get strung out again. Yeah, there's the Carrier car, that 28. You know, they were, they were tough. They had a tough night right out of the box on Thursday night. Had all kind of trouble with their primary car before they even qualified. It was a really, really tough deal. They had to roll a backup car out of the trailer, but you talk about redeeming yourself late when it counts all the way to fourth position here. Well, there you're looking at the race for the fifth and sixth spot as Dale McDowell and Rick Eckert battle there. Rick Eckert goes way up on the top again. His car seems to be getting better up on the high side. He drove in on the cushion, kind of drove off of it a little bit in turn two, but now McDowell tries to look to the inside. Great racing right there. Boy, that's a little bit of brinksmanship. <laughs> Eckert a little bit to the middle, McDowell outside. They may have made a little bit of contact there, but they're hard on the gas coming out in the front straightaway here. Great racing right there. Yeah, that's that's some real hard running as you take a look now. Scott Bloomquist, you can see that distance. He's put back between Billy Moyer, but Moyer's not doing too bad. He's still staying within that striking distance. He closed the gap to about two car lengths there. Well, last time his strategy worked awfully well because he waited till they got into traffic and then made it look easy by boxing him in. He may be being patient right here to say, you know what, Bloomer, that's okay. We're going to run into some traffic here soon. Rick Eckert stays up on the high side of the racetrack as Dale McDowell follows him down the back straightaway into turn three. Bloomquist moves up to the cushion. Billy Moyer right behind him. And Bloomquist goes right through the middle. We talked about it earlier. If he's found that rubber on the racetrack. Bloomquist also grew up here in Iowa. I think it was the Fort Dodge area, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken. His father was a commercial pilot. And Scott also has a lot of uh, interest in flying. Has a Piper Cub, I think it is, that he flies around his home there at Warrensburg, Tennessee. And um, Very interesting guy when you get to sit down and talk to him. And a heck of a racer. They battle for position off of turn four and down the front straightaway. Looks like Denny Eckrich and Justin Fagers, the new track record holder, battle it out on the speedway. Fagers has had a little bit of a tough night. He's dropped all the way back to 15th. They're racing for the 14th position. Now we see Moyer again, as we said earlier, they're in traffic. Here comes Moyer trying to make a move on Bloomquist. Boy, Scott Bloomquist had to get on the brakes there for the lap car. It allowed Billy Moyer to reel him in. Coming down the front sheet, now they'll go almost nose to tail, but Bloomquist goes back up to the top. He'll move around Brady Smith in turn four. Well, here comes Moyer now to the inside just a little bit. Now he's going to move back outside. Just sort of like he's stalking his prey, you might say. Just staying within striking distance. If Bloomer hesitates any at all, Moyer's going to be right there to take advantage. I think he hit it right on the head. He just needed the cars to get back into lap traffic as they move by Chris Speaker there by the scoreboard. And Bloomquist comes off to turn four. Down the big long straightaway here at Knoxville. Drives it right through the middle. Lap traffic ahead. He goes back up to the cushion in turn number two. Working with 37 laps to go, soon to be 36. Bloomer trying to put some distance between himself and the 21 car. Doing a great job there through traffic that time. Yeah, he did a nice job. Drove right between those two cars. Nice and easy. He slid right back up to the cushion and drove it hard off the turn. Moyer now, we see somebody got some smoke. That's the Eddie Carrier Jr. Tough, tough oh, break. What that looks terminal. That's a lot of smoke, Tony. I don't think that thing's going to last coming from the engine compartment. That is not, not, not a good sign. Well, definitely what he doesn't need is for the engine to go away. But think of the guys behind him. He's right now running in the fourth spot. He could be dumping oil on the racetrack. That's definitely going to affect those guys behind him. That's right. Track officials are on top of that, looking to see if there might be some spillage from that race car. In the meantime, Carrier stays on the button. Bloomquist gets up over the cushion just a little bit at that time and uh, struggled coming off. Well, the thing that's in his favor right now is he had some lap cars between he and Billy Moyer, so it wasn't as uh, crucial that he be so smooth. He can have a little bit of a mistake and still be able to recover from it. 35 laps remaining. Scott Bloomquist leads. Billy Moyer second. Steve Francis third. Eddie Carrier Jr. fourth. Rick Eckert shown fifth. 
Second five, Dale McDowell, Darren Miller, Mike Marlar, Brian Burkhofer, and Jason, Josh Richard, excuse me, in 10. Here comes a race for that lead. Moyer has really closed in. He had a good run on him, and I thought he was going to get him going into the corner, but Bloomquist able to hold him off. Billy Moyer right on his heels. He thought he might wait till they got into traffic. The time's running out, so to speak, in a 100-lap race. Just uh, about 32 laps to go, Dave. It could be go time for Billy Moyer. The guy to watch here, I think, Tony, is just a gut feeling is Steve Francis in that 15. You know, he came from deep in the pack, 13th. He's uh, done a good job. To, to, he's kind of stalking him. Now there he makes a he move got on it. Moyer. He got him on the bottom of turn one. He's going to try to slide up. Big slider coming up. Not going to get in front of him. Moyer sticks it right up there by the big guardrail going down into turn three. Francis on the bottom. Boy, this is going to get good. The guy you didn't necessarily think about because he's been so quiet, he's in the heat now. He's just a quiet guy all around, Tony. The Kentucky Colonel. We see the yellow wave here at Knoxville. Yellow flag on the racetrack. This will be interesting if they move Francis back behind Moyer because of this uh, yellow. I think the yellow is for a slowed car of the 75 of Terry Phillips on the racetrack. Boy, great finish shaping up. Stay with us. You don't want to miss it. The Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals here on Speed right after this. Welcome back to Knoxville Raceway. A couple of guys in the work area done for the night. The 28C Eddie Carrier Jr. Something wrong with the cooling system. That car never did lose power. Also the 75 of Terry Phillips. Transmission went away on the car. Back upstairs. Green flag and here comes Bloomer. Scott Bloomquist to take the Restart here, lead the field back to uh, Green Flag Racing. 31 laps remaining, 69 laps in the book. As we mentioned, Steve Francis had made his way past Billy Moyer and kept that second place starting or, uh, running spot there. Now we see Rick Eckert moving into the picture, Tony. That's right, Eckert back on the bottom side of the racetrack where he was fast on his qualifying night. Caught up with Billy Moyer, now going back to the inside. That's the race for the third spot. They're still gonna battle side by side. In turn number two, Moyer with the advantage down the back straightaway. Rick Eckert will saddle back into that fourth spot. Now, they had a nervous moment with that orange 24, and there we're going to see the yellow again. Oh, that's Jay Johnson. Yep, Jay Johnson with a flat left front. Eckert's car, they said, locked in two gears before they, they gave the command to start the engines. The crew was frantically under that car trying to get it back, the transmission back into a normal mode where they could race, and a little bit of good luck there that they were able to get it going. Tough break for Jay Johnson, losing the left front tire on that car. He was running, Dave, in the 18th spot, so not a bad run for the 5J. You know, uh, this place normally, Tony, known uh, for sprint car racing. In fact, the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum, a beautiful building right there in your picture, located just outside turn two. They have a lot of different racing activities and non-racing activities. They had a racing-related film festival, in fact, this weekend, where Jeff Bowden, who did a really neat documentary, uh, was very present in that. And uh, earlier today, Hot Rod Patterson caught up with Jeff Bowden to talk about that documentary. Guys, you're right. Knoxville's more than just racing with the Hall of Fame out in turn two. The film festival this year, and Jeff Bowden is the director of the new documentary, Dirt. Tell us about that, Jeff. First of all, can I say thank you to the folks here at Knoxville Raceway and, and at the Hall of Fame, Tom Schmeck, particularly for inviting us to bring Dirt here. Dirt is a documentary uh, in which we, we thought we wanted to try to get at the soul of American racing, which we think is dirt track racing. And so we spent a year, we spent nine months filming at the Devil's Bowl Speedway just outside Dallas in Mesquite, Texas, uh, owned by the legendary Lanny Edwards. And we filmed the street stock racers as they moved through a season and moved through their lives and tried to capture something about uh, uh, the hard work in the middle of the night on race cars, uh, uh, a little bit of the cheating, and to get something of their spirit in, on film. And a lot of the sacrifices that go along with putting a team on that speedway for that class. Uh, you know, and, and these folks are working hard 40 or 50 hours a week in their, in their normal jobs, 30 hours a week at night. Uh, we had great characters. We had, we had one woman in the film. She was a rookie, the only woman driving at the Devil's Bowl in any of the classes. Uh, her husband was racing in the same class. She was some, we knew something would happen with that story over the course of the year. Uh, we've been taking this film all over the country to film festivals. We've gone as far as Melbourne, Australia with it. And uh, we were delighted to come to no Knoxville and, and show race fans a little, bit of, a little bit of what they go through. Well, we appreciate your hard work. Thank you for the visit, and good luck with the film. Bloomquist on the gas. Now let's see what Moyer can do with him. 
Bloomquist will come down into turn one, goes right through the middle, up to the top. You see Moyer up on the high side, Francis as well. Eckert's the only one of the top four guys that didn't go to the top. He went to the bottom where no one else was. Now uh, Francis shuts him off just a little bit to the inside there, trying to get a run on Moyer's car. Bloomquist able to pull away just a little bit, as you can see. Rick Eckert on the bottom of the turn, tries to stay on the bottom, but starts to slide up, maybe trying to find a different line to get a little better run on him through the corner, and pulls right up behind Steve Francis again. There's Bloomer out front, doing very well. Abel, on this restart, Tony, this is the best we've seen him pull away from the field so far under on just a clean racetrack. Exactly. Billy Moyer still running in that second spot as we look back into the field here. That was Darren Miller in the 32, who's currently shown ninth. Pretty good gaggle of cars fighting for position. There's Bloomer out front. Moyer trying hard to reel him in. 26 laps to go as they flash past the flag stand this time. There's Francis in that good-looking Valvoline Mopar-powered car. There's Mac Daddy Dale McDowell. Kind of hanging around there, currently shown in sixth. Now Eckert. Makes a run here, Burkhofer trying to get past him. That's for fifth, excuse me, for fourth, actually. Oh, and he got up into the guardrail just a little bit there, Dave, in the turn. Yeah, you can run it high, Berkey, but boy, it worked for him. Look at that, he bounced off the <laughs> boy, fence sure and got did. a great run. Got right Took around Eckert there. Now in fourth, here comes Berkey. McDowell trying to poke his nose in there and give Eckert some trouble. Brian Burkhofer trying to march his way to the front. We saw him do this last year. He waited until the late stages of the race and then made his move to the front. Well, it is getting late indeed. 25 laps to go here. Brian Burkhofer starts his pursuit toward the front. He got around Rick Ecker. Now he needs to start reeling in Steve Francis, who runs in the third spot. Berkey would benefit a little bit from a yellow right here if we could get it. Oh, and look, yellow flag coming out. As... Try to look for the race car. I believe the yellow coming out for the 5J. Sure is. Look at that tire come right off the wheel. Yep. There's Jay Johnson's 5 into the work area. Big 24-lap shootout coming up. Stay with us here on Speed for the Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals. Welcome back. Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals. I'm Dave Argebright, Tony Bachoven alongside Rod Patterson down in the pits. Hot Rod, Brian Burkhofer had a stop in the work area a little earlier. What was up? Well, I asked the crew what was wrong with the race car. He said Brian didn't like the way the car was handling. Kind of the situation this weekend with everybody, everybody's been tight on the racetrack. They brought the car in, made a couple of adjustments. They started with a 55 on the right rear, and Brian Burkhofer is notorious for waiting until the later part of the race to find the top side and make his run. That's how he won the race on Friday night. He's going to try to do the same again here tonight as well. Well, whatever he's got, he's got 24 laps to show it because we're coming back to the restart. Scott Bloomquist leads him to the green flag. Billy Moyer second, Steve Francis third. Burkhofer now shown fourth. Rick Eckerd right behind him in the 24. You see him go down into turn one. Bloomquist gets another good start on the field. There you see a look at Billy Moyer. Here comes Berkey on the inside of Francis. Great run on Francis right there to the inside. This is deja vu all oh, over again. Just like Gibera last year. Would say. Rick Eckert now he'll move by Francis as well for the position down the front chute. But Berkey's not done. Look at him oh. go right to the bottom. Oh, look at that car just stick right on the bottom side of the racetrack. Boy, he made it work that time. Whatever they did in that work area really, really worked on that race car. Billy Moyer better be ready to defend his spot because Brian Burkhofer is on his way trying to challenge for that second position. Trying to get another run on him. Eckert right back behind him third. Francis fourth. And Dale McDowell trying to fight with him for that position. Great racing throughout here. Scott Bloomquist calm and cool out front. Oh, Dave, the yellow coming out. We've got a car turned around down in turn number four. Boy, is this what Scott Bloomquist wants, all these short greens? I, I think it is, Tony, and I'll tell you why. He's not quite as good in lap traffic, but with these late stages, there's been enough attrition that it takes him longer each time on the restart to get into traffic. So this actually helps Bloomquist, I think, to have these yellows this late in the race with 22 laps to go. Well, you see Kerry Hansen's car number 25 getting turned around here as he spun the car there in turn four. Gonna bring it down into the work area there. We'll see. Oh, you can see some front end damage to that car. Is looks like the bodywork's pushed underneath there. He stops it there just shy of the concrete. But boy, what a tough break for him. I, I think 
They may be done uh, pulling into their pit area, sure Tony. I think they're finished. And this is a pretty quick yellow, Tony. I think because the uh, the work area was not busy, we're going right back to Green Scott Bloomquist. Leads him back. As I said a moment ago, I think he likes these late yellows. We'll just have to see if it does indeed work in his favor and see what Brian Burkhofer has for him on this restart. Look at him go right to the bottom, Dave. Burkhofer did it on the last restart. He dove to the bottom, gained the spot. He's going to try it again. He's going to try to hold it on the bottom and move by Moyer there in turn two. You see it happening. Side by side, Moyer up on the high side of the racetrack. And Burkhofer pulls right up alongside him, drives it deep into turn three. Boy, great job for Burke coming in there late. Wow, look at it. Just really makes that it front stick. end up there. We talked about that berm to the inside there and how treacherous it is, but he's figured it out. I don't know if it's a home state deal or whatever, but he's figured out how to get right down there on it without messing up his race car. Well, he takes that car just past the apex of the turn and just turns it down the back straightaway. Doesn't have quite enough yet to get past uh, Billy Moyer there in turn four. And you know what may happen here? They're going to race each other so hard that may help them catch up with Scott Lundquist. See Billy Moyer there, bring it right back up to the high side of the racetrack. Look at that distance between first and second. Lundquist has been able to drive away from him here. He's got a clear racetrack ahead. He's looked so smooth all night and very quiet. You know, all weekend he's been quiet. But here he is with 20 laps to go with a pretty comfortable lead. Field works down the front straightaway. Everybody's still trying to gain some spots. This race isn't over yet. And look at that lead, boy. Lucas is just driving away from Billy Moyer. And I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit, Tony. At this pace with 19, now I believe 18 laps to go. At this rate, given the, the way these cars are spread out on the racetrack, I don't think here he's going to get into heavy traffic for at least 10 or 12 more laps. That means if we can stay green, we're not going to see intense traffic except for the last five laps and of this that's race. Where what you a shootout. See well, you see Burkhofer trying to make that move on Billy Moyer. Can't get right back up there. But we all know how patient Burkhofer is. He could be waiting until we get a little closer to the end. And, and I can't read his mind, Tony, obviously, but I don't think so. I think with 17, 18 laps to go, whatever he's got, he's got to show his hand right now. He can't mess around too long with Moyer because look at that distance. Now he slid clear up and bumped the fence. Right into the guardrail again. But if he, he can't wait long here because all this time, Bloomer, Scott Bloomquist, is driving away. That's right. He's just left him, so to speak, there down the back chute. You see Burkhofer's car just hiked up on the high side there. Billy Moyer trying to close that gap, but what's happening is Bloomquist is closing in on the traffic. Yep, about a second and a half difference. They're running a fast enough pace. There's a lot of stragglers in the very back of the field. Now let's see how dense the traffic is once they catch him. Scott Bloomquist has done a great job. He patiently moved his way to the front, leads down the back straightaway into turn three, right through the middle, slides up to the cushion as he's done the last. He's getting very consistent. He's been doing that same move the last five to seven laps. Boy, Buddy, their dog, they've got a neat little Jack uh, Russell Terrier in their motorhome. Just the sweetest little dog, and he's even probably doing backflips like those dogs <laughs> in the commercials do right now, thinking he's going to get some doggy treats if Daddy brings his 35 grand ones. home. But now they've caught up with the traffic. Bloomquist moves by traffic there up on the high side. He's got right back to the top of the racetrack where he wanted to be. Now Billy Moyer has to do the same thing. He's got to be able to get by the lap cars. Well, he's trimmed about a half second off that lead now in this traffic. I was wrong. Oh, there you see Jimmy Mars slowing. Jimmy Mars slowing on the racetrack right ahead of your leaders. Moyer's if, caught him. See if we see a yellow or if Mars. Mars is just going to get right into the pit area. No yellow. We keep going. Bloomquist has to be happy about that. He probably thought, man, I hope the caution doesn't come out again. Now Moyer just eight-tenths of a second behind Bloomquist. Exactly what we've seen all night. On a clear racetrack, Bloomer is simply better. Once they get into traffic, Moyer is able to reel him right in. Moyer looks like he's been having a little trouble getting through turns three and four. He gets up over the cushion there by the scoreboard, and the car unsettles, and he has to gather it back together. Well, you can see how white and slippery the racetrack looks. They've just about used up all the moisture, and it's smooth and slippery. And it's a, you've seen the cushion or the edge push way out to the fence now. It does make it more difficult to come off. Ten laps to go on this time by for Scott Bloomquist. Moyer still running in that second spot. 
Brian Burkhofer still pacing in the third position. He's trying to gain it, gain some distance on uh, uh, Moyer down the back straightaway, but he hasn't been able to do it. But boy, that car of Bloomquist is just so smooth. I'll tell you what, terrific race for Bloomquist so far. I mean, he's quiet, but he, you know, he's got it done so far. Berkey's still working on Moyer and just can't quite get him. The leaders work by traffic up on the high side. Traffic seemed to have moved to the bottom. Probably not by choice, but it's worked out for your leaders anyhow. Rick Eckert shown in fourth. Second five is Steve Francis, Dale McDowell, Darren Miller, Matt Miller, Billy Drake, and Dan Schlieper rounding out the top ten. Now we see Burkhofer is closed in on Billy Moyer as they come down into turn number one. Right up by the big guardrail there. Billy Moyer tries to hold him off down the back straightaway. Bloomer was able to pull back away almost two seconds lead now. A lead of almost two seconds over Moyer in second place here. Seven laps to go, Dave. Scott Bloomquist looking ahead of where he's going. He's got to feel good about the fact that he's not buried in traffic. And he's got to concentrate because you don't start counting that $35,000 until you're literally parked in victory lane. He can't mess up, you know, get a little ahead of himself, whatever. He's got to run his race, do the same things he's done all night. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Here we see that battle for the second spot. Burkhofer to the inside. Moyer up on the high side. It's a long way around the top here at Knoxville. Burkhofer putting it to it down the bottom side. Side by side. Dave, they're going to race him into turn three. He may have decided there's just not enough at the top. I've got to try the bottom, and he gets it done. Boy, he did a nice job there. He waited. He got by Moyer for that second spot. Moyer stays right with him, though. He'll go to the inside with about five to go. Five to go, Tony. Here comes Moyer right Right back at Brian Burkhofer. Boy, that race for second isn't over yet as Bloomquist leads the way. You look at Moyer there, he's got to get back up there, reel him in as they come with the closing laps here. Less than five to go. Scott Bloomquist holding a two-something second lead now over Brian Burkhofer in second. There's Bloomer in that green, black, and white zero all the way out with the fence. Just lapped Donnie Moran, the million-dollar man. Down the back stretch he goes. Just smooth as can be. Looks smooth like it's just a Sunday drive, doesn't it? Boy, the car just perfect for him tonight. Here he comes. Three laps to go this time by for Bloomer. There's the fight behind him. Brian Burkhofer. Billy Moyer. Now Rick Eckert trying to fight for that third spot. Going to try to slide him. Not going to have enough. He'll fall back in line. Pull right up behind him. Going down the back straightaway. They've raced hard. The tires have got to be getting hot. It could be getting worn out. Will there be enough for him to hold on to the position? And a very slippery racetrack here, Very Tony. slippery, you're right. There's Eckert, fading just a little bit, trying to reel Moyer back in. Had a good run on him a minute ago, but lost a lot of that momentum. Now here's Bloomer, trying to get inside. Some tight lap traffic, threading the needle. White flag being shown. Scott Bloomquist, here he comes. One to go, Tony. Doug Clark waves the white flag. Time is running out. If Burkhofer wants it, Dave, he's going to have to come and get it. But I think this one is going to be Scott Bloomquist. Wiggles just a little bit, going down the back stretch. Now sets up for turn three. Here he comes to the inside. Coming off the corner, Doug Clark has the checkered flag ready. Scott Bloomquist, $35,000 winner here at the Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals. Brian Burkhofer put on a stellar run, coming home to the second spot. Billy Moyer finishing in the third position. Rick Eckert fourth. Dale McDowell running home in the fifth position. The second five, Steve Francis, Matt Miller, Billy Drake, Darren Miller, and Dan Schlieper rounding out the top ten. Great run for Bloomer. Boy, I'll tell you what, that's got to be a happy guy. He was low profile all weekend long. He has got a legion of fans, Tony, in this sport who just love that black zero. They're loyal, they're loud, they're intense. This is their night here at the Knoxville Raceway. What a great run for Scott Bloomquist. Let's hear from him when we come back. Stay with us to hear from Bloomer at the Lucas Oil Late Model Knoxville Nationals right here on Speed. Stellar performance, Scott Bloomquist gets on that Hoosier hat, crawls out. We're going to hear from him in just a moment. Boy, he's a happy guy. Hot Rod Patterson, get right in there and uh, let's hear from Bloomer. All right, down in the infield with Scott Bloomquist, and Scott, congratulations on a tremendous run. Well, you know, we moved around quite a bit out there. 
uh, you know, my guy signaled me that the middle was fast, and we went down and got run around the middle there, and, you know, Billy saw Billy get by us that time, and I was like, nah, I just did, I don't agree with that, so I went back to the top, went back to what I'd been doing. I don't know how big a lead I had, but I felt like I picked it up quite a bit and probably set a pretty good pace after that. Had a great battle with Dale McDowell for the first 42 laps. You take the lap on, or the lead on lap 43. Tell me about the move and how you're able to hang on for the the, uh, the win. Well, you know, uh, those guys were they ran good early. You know, Dale was pretty strong right off the bat there, and uh, you know we just kept being easy with our tires. Didn't want to tear the edges off of them. Uh, you know, didn't want to push it too hard. It's a long race. Knew the racetrack was going to get really hard, and uh, wanted to be sure we had plenty of tire for the end. So. You know, I just I let him set whatever pace he wanted, just kind of gradually found what groove worked for me. Once I saw I was gaining a little bit, just stayed in that line and uh, gradually pulled it off. Early in the race, there were a lot of laps consecutively, a lot of green flag runs, long runs, and then about uh, 30, 40 laps to go, a lot of stops and starts. Does something like that throw off a rhythm for you and then make you think a little bit about the guys behind you? Well, you know, no doubt about it. Uh, you never know what's going to happen after those starts. and. And you just, you kind of got to run a line like we'd go in the middle and then we'd go to the top, you know, so there, it'd be hard for anybody to get a run at us doing it that way. Um, you know, and then once we got a run and felt like we got in a good rhythm, you know, it seemed like I could keep it up every start after that. Congratulations, congratulations, and thanks again for the time. Hey, thank you. We loved it. Scott Bloomquist, national champion, back upstairs to Tony and Dave. Right. Well, some final thoughts right after this. Stay with us here on Speed.